Hello friends, welcome to Insights I Can Initiative. In today's video, we are going to discuss about the prelims high yield series. You all know that for last few days, we are doing videos on the prelims high yield series. In case if you miss out the previous videos, you can find in a dedicated playlist where you will find all the related videos that can help you in a quick revision. Today's theme is going to be the space. Yesterday we discussed about the report and day before yesterday we discussed about the international summits and before that we discussed about international organizations. So without any further delay, as a part of the space, in today's video we are going to discuss about following six topics. It starts with the International Space Station and ends with the INSAT 3DS. The reason for picking these topics are, these are in news in between the January to, I mean this 2024, January to March. That is the reason I picked these topics. In the subsequent videos, I'll pick the topics related to space, which came in the last year. So that, so you can easily revise these particular issues. Regarding the International Space Station. Actually, International Space Station, it is in news for various reasons. Even you all know that Russia announced officially that they are exiting from the International Space Station. Regarding this, we will try to do quick revision regarding the International Space Station. You all know that International Space Station is like a laboratory present in the space. And this lab, it was not launched as a whole in a single go. Okay, It was launched at a different point of times. Different, different components launched at different point of times and they were assembled in the space. Now we will see the information regarding the International Space Station. It was first launched in 1988, 20th November from Kazakhstan. The mission life, it can extend, it can operate it till 2030. And the orbit, it, rev it revolves around the LEO, a low earth orbit at around 400 kilometers height of the surface of the earth. And for every 90 to 93 meters, it will finish one revolution around the earth. So that is its uh, revolution speed. The size is almost uh, 450 tons. Agencies involved in the International Space Station, they are USA, that means NASA, European Space Agency, JAXA from Japan, CSA from Canada, Roscosmos from Russia. That means ISRO is not involved in the this International Space Station. Next, this particular International Space Station significance is mainly to conduct experiments in the space related to microgravity and other things. India is aiming to have its own space station by 2035 with the starting of the Gaganyan in 2028. Initially, we will send humans into the space. Then next level will be the having the own space station by 2035. It is going to be fully operationalized. That is what the initial expectations from the ISRO. Now, apart from, uh, you know, like India, so far we don't have any separate uh, space station, but other countries, they are having their own space station. For example, if you look at the Russia, Russia is having space stations uh, like Salyut 1 to Salyut 7 and even the Mir. So these are the space station from Russia, USSR, S12. From America, they are having the Skylab and China, Tiangyag 1 and 2. So these are the space stations of various countries. Okay, next. So this international space station, where it uh, uh, locates and this altitude, everything I explained to you and the key partners of the ISS also. I explained. The first component launched into the space in 1998 and the recent one, even it launched in the 2021 as well. The lifespan of this uh, international space station is up to 2030. S other space station from Russia, we already discussed about from China. China initially launched the test space labs with the name of Tiangyang 1, Tiangyang 2. Now, in 2021, China launched the full scale space station named as Tiangyang Space Station. It started its operations fully by 2022. USA Skylab we already discussed. And America is also planning to send human onto the surface of the moon. Okay. So after the Apollo uh, missions, that is going to be the Artemis missions. Through Artemis missions, they not only would like to send humans onto the moon surface, even they would like to uh, establish a base camp on the surface of the moon as well. India point of view. India is planning the Bharti Antariksha mission, permanent space station. It is going to be fully operational by 2035. First component will be sent by 2028. India is following the three strategy regarding the space. That is initially sending the robotic spacecraft, then human spaceflight program and a permanent national space station. So this is the three stage strategy. Next topic number two. That is the PSLV C-58 ExpoSat mission. You know the speciality of the ExpoSat uh, is it is the India's first dedicated uh, satellite to observe the X-rays. 
so what kind of information we will get by observing the x-rays that is also you have to understand okay by observing the x-rays we can understand some of the things which happens in the space you know like um, uh, various uh, various emissions coming from the space and uh, certain developments in the stars which are present out of the uh, milky way galaxy those kind of information we can know actually this is the world's second dedicated x-ray uh, sa studying satellite okay the first one what is the first one we will see and here one more speciality is PSLV C-58, it not only launched the ExpertSat mission in a particular orbit, after that it descended into another height and there it launched some more experimental satellites also. That means you can call it as this is the two orbital flight. Generally, our space flight will be the only single orbital flights. So with this, we can uh, achieve more efficiency in our space flights. ISRO successfully launched X-ray polarimeter satellite, that is ExpoSat by using the satellite that is the PSLV C-58. This is PSLV C-58 60th flight. PSLV includes four stage launch vehicle. Solid fuel at first and third stage. Liquid fuel at second and fourth stage. Okay, Here we won't use cryogenic fuel. Two altitudes. At 650 kilometers this uh, particular PSLV it placed ExpoSat at around 650 kilometers then it uh, descended into 350 kilometers there it placed orbital experimental module 3 that is the POEM this uh, this orbital experimental module it includes payloads such as Rudra, Arca 200, Green Impulse Transmitter, Dust Experiment these are various payloads okay these payloads are going to be there in space for very short term but what is the main objective the main objective of these payloads is to carry in some experiments okay as long as they can be stay there okay so that some kind of uh, uh, short term experiments also can be performed that is the main objective of this this is the first dedicated satellite to study the x-rays and this is the world's second one the world's first one was nasa's imaging x-ray polarimetry explorer that is ixpe this was the world's first and now the topic number three this is a very interesting one this is regarding the radio waves telescope recently union cabinet approved certain amount of the funding to this radio telescope okay this is an international program as a part of this international program across the globe uh, this program is going to uh, launch two telescope across the globe okay where there these two telescopes are coming up and uh, by spending money by taking part in this project what india is going to get that also we will discuss and uh, you all know that radio waves by observing the radio waves we can know some information regarding the origin of universe and other information so here i'll ask you one question in india we are constructing the lego laser inferometer gravitational observatory gravitational waves to observe the gravitational wave where that is planning where they are constructing that okay where the lego observatory is constructing in india so this particular square kilometer array observatory in short form we can call it as skao this skao project includes two telescopes one telescope is for the low frequency telescope the other one is regarding the medium frequency telescope this low frequency telescope coming up in australia and the medium one is coming up in the south africa this you have to understand and the low frequency range this telescope can catch the radio waves in the wavelength of 50 mg to the 350 mg there's a frequency frequency range whereas the mid frequency range this telescope can catch between the range of 350 to 15.4 gigahertz so this is the range so by using this by using this information even so we can uh, we can develop some artificial intelligent related technologies as well india point of view so union cabinet approved around 1250 crores to take part in this skavo project and this is an intergovernmental international organization dedicated to study radio astronomy and the headquarters is united kingdom and uh, this project includes one global observatory and uh, two telescopes these two telescopes are coming up one in australia the other one in the south africa okay next this project is uh, going to be operationalized by 2029 the main objective of this project is understanding about the birth of universe and uh, detecting the gravitational waves gravitational waves are very minute and uh, it requires a lot of skills and uh, technology to capture these gravitational waves 
India joined SKAO project in 2012 as an associate member in 2022. An organization from India, that is, the National Center for Radio Astronomy from Pune, they signed a deal with SKAO. This is the thing. So now topic number four. So this is about the reusable launching vehicle. You might have thought that sometimes when we launch the PSLV and GSLV, they are launching satellite and they are simply falling into the ocean and we are unable to use them again. That means they are simply one time use, ready made. Because of that, just for single launch, we are spending a lot of money in making these launching vehicles. How about using a launching vehicle multiple number of times? That would be a great idea, isn't it? A launching vehicle which is placing satellite into the space and falling into the ocean and we able to collect them with the minor repays, we, we using them again, that idea would be very great. Our ISRO is experimenting regarding this. That is a reusable launching vehicle. This is not new at the global level. SpaceX is already having this technology partially. Okay. Now let's see the reusable launching vehicle recent. Uh, actually, this is the second test. The first test already we done previously, few years back. This is the technology demonstration program. That means the earlier stage. So here, this is how things work here. So generally, launching vehicle will take off after certain stage. Particular satellite, they will be placed into the, you know, like designated orbits. Then the launching vehicle subjected to free fall, it will be collected. Again, it will be used. So the name itself is the self-indicating reusable launching vehicle. Okay, that is about the RLV the second version. Already the first one we tested in 2023. RLV LEX1. This is the RLV LEX2. So it will be very helpful to you. This program name is RLV TD program. Okay. And this is about space plane which can travel to the low earth orbit. Here you have to understand low earth orbit. Just now I mentioned that all the international space station generally they placed in the low earth orbit to deliver the payloads and return to the earth for reuse again. Here, this is the keyword. Reusing is a very, very important. The TSTO. In the next level, this can be used for the two stage two orbit. Just now I mentioned regarding the ExpoSat, where this particular uh, satellite, I mean launching vehicle, they place the satellite into two different orbits and then they'll fall into the ocean. We can use them again. That is known as TSTO, two stage two orbit. Next. The topic number five, this is going to be the ISRO. Interestingly, we are launching one satellite, but here we are not launching from India. We are taking the help of the Elon Musk SpaceX and the SpaceX rocket that is a Falcon 9. With the help of Falcon 9 rockets, we are launching a satellite that is a GSAT 20. Here, don't get confused. Already we launched the GSAT 24. Okay, that is related to the DTH communication and GSAT 20 is also related to the GSAT communication, I mean this DTH communication and uh, internet broadband and all these things. GSAT 20 original, I mean 24, we launched originally, that was ISRO and Tata Play joint, I mean combinedly. So this one is completely ISRO launching. So from ISRO, which organization is taking care about the, taking care about this launch? New Space India Limited. You may get doubts. What is this New Space India Limited? It is a commercial wing of the ISRO. Uh, it, it acts as a bridge between the ISRO and the Indian industries. If Indian industries would like to leverage any technology or uh, if Indian industries would like to use uh, any application of ISRO, they have to consult to the New Space India Limited. So here, New Space India Limited is taking care about this communication satellite. This is renamed as GSAT N2. It uh, gives this KA band uh, satellite, I mean signals. It is fully owned, operated and uh, funded by NSIEL. So you have to know what is this NSIEL, NSIEL is all about. It is the PSU which works under the Ministry of you know, like Earth Sciences Department of Space. It established in 2019. It is a commercial arm of the ISRO. Its prime responsibility is it acts as a bridge between the Indian industries and ISRO. There is one more organization is also there in ISRO that works as a bridge between the foreign countries and India, ISRO. For example, if any foreign country, they would like to launch their satellite through ISRO. That organization plays important role. What is that organization name? Okay, come into your answer. NSIL, it is based in headquarters, based in Bangalore. And the SpaceX, this Falcon 9 rocket. Actually, why we are using this one? Why can't we, we use our GSAT? Actually, the payload of the GSAT 20 is very heavier. 
this kind of heavier payload we cannot launch through gsat so far our you know like uh, uh, lvm lvm that's the advanced version of the gsat so lvm also it can launch uh, up to only 4000 kg that means it has limitations we are having these kind of limitations uh, regarding launching of heavy objects if we able to overcome then only we can launch humans into the space that is what we are working on now the first one regarding this kind of demand driven satellite that was the gsat 24 this second one is the gsat 20 these are the demand driven satellite mission that means so those services will help to the common man next sixth one this is regarding the insat 3ds this is especially the weather forecasting service isro successfully launched this the type is weather forecasting satellites launching vehicle gslv f14 remember in pslv there are only two types of fuel will be used solid as well as the liquid whereas in gslv we use three types of different fuel solid liquid and cryogenic fuel that you have to understand here next the launch site you all know that objective monitoring the earth surface carrying observations oceanic meteorological parameters of atmosphere oceanic meteorological parameters and uh, the observing the atmospheric parameters as well it will be in the geo uh, geo you know like um, stationary orbit before that uh, in the transition first it will be in the geo synchronous tra transfer orbit from there onwards it will go to the geo stationary orbit okay so gslv f14 it is the 16th flight of the gslv and the 10th flight of the indigenous cryogenic stage that means previously in the gslv we used the foreign countries cryogenic technology gslv is a three stage launch i told you first one solid and the second stage is the liquid propellant third one is regarding the cryogenic stage gslv satellite generally they use for the communication purpose navigation earth resource service and any other proprietary missions so this is the application regarding the gslv satellite okay now regarding the today's video questions today's video questions let's see today's video questions question number one consider the following statement regarding the insat 3ds statement number one it is a meteorological satellite statement number two it can be used to monitor land ocean surface for weather forecasting and disaster warning statement num number three the launch vehicle used to launch insat 3ds is the pslv which of the three statements are right next second one second question is is about consider the following statement the mangalyaan launched by isro it is also known as mars orbiter mission made in india the second country to have the spacecraft orbit the mars after the usa after usa india is the second country only there this statement is saying third one the only country to be successfully uh, done their you know like this mars orbital mission succeeded in the first attempt this is the statement so out of this which one is the correct one pick the right statement as we reach to the end of this video this video is all about high yield series and the theme is the space so this is about the detailed analysis regarding the space related aspect of the high yield series i hope these videos are useful to you in your preparation if you would like to give any further inputs feel free to give your inputs in the comment section thanks for watching this video have a great day jai hind